Figuring out what pasture raise means to our family, it's a family event. And you'll see that we get everybody involved except for Christine and Cecily. And they just weren't on camera when they were involved. This is a glimpse into kind of how we raise our animals on pasture. And I hope it helps you figure out what it means to you. Come on, Kevin. Welcome to The Simple Life. Today is gonna be insanely busy. On my way to deliver the pig shelter and the pig water, I decided to stop by our goat pasture, which you may recognize, because merely a few months ago, this was a pig pasture. So now what we're doing is we're actually rotating our goats into here. The goats will go in, they're gonna graze down the tall stuff, obviously. They'll eat some of the baby grass. They'll go around the edges and clean the edges up. But they are enjoying themselves quite a bit, especially the little meat goats, which is the little brown one right there and the little black and white one back over there. Those two are almost never without an absolutely huge plump belly. It's absolutely hysterical. So we've had them in here twice. We're doing every other day. The main reason for doing every other day is so that way, two things, they don't overgraze it. The second thing is uh, so they can get used to the grasses. They're not used to being on grasses, grasses like this. They're used to the pastures that they have, which are not this lush and this fluffy. The next thing after this is we're gonna start setting up pastures on the other side and, and going around the pond with them. I have some areas over there that we're gonna be putting them in. Uh, and the idea is just so that way they can get a good amount of forage. Also, I wanted uh, Christine to get used to moving these guys uh, on a daily basis. She has a little, a little stick and a bucket of alfalfa. And they follow her, they absolutely love her. They don't love me, they love her. Let's get over to the pigs. We're gonna be using our new watering trailer platform thing that we created for the pigs so that they would have a shelter and water in the same place. Then in the summer, we know they have plenty of water. They have a good solid uh, shelter that's not gonna get flipped over in the wind or anything like that, as well as it's on wheels. It's easier to move. Even though the boys will end up having to move the regular kind of trash can, I call them trash can shelters, this is gonna make it easier to get the water in and out and not have to do watering every day. And then it's once a week versus once a day. It also means that they can just ride a quad out versus bringing the six by six out, which means less compaction on the soil. So there's water coming out. This will fill up in a few minutes. All right, well, they are moved. They're in their new area with their new water. I guarantee they're gonna love that. It also gives them a nice solid thing to itch on because it's it's solid. Each of those legs is meant for holding, I think it's up to 2,500 pounds. So that thing's not going anywhere. We are going to move our cows who are on the wrong side of the, this wire. I don't know. Clint said there might be a hole in the fence along here and they're, they're just walking through the hole. They're not jumping the wire, we know that much. Well, the boys have most of the wire cleaned up. Clay's getting the last of the post. I'm gonna go up and actually push the cattle down to the other side with a quad, just so that way it's easier to get them when we're ready to move them. Now showing you all these beautiful shots of beautiful pastures is a bit like cheating because this is just spring, middle of summer, grasses go dormant, pastures look dead. You get into fall, we start getting some rain and some moisture, pastures start coming back to life, and then you get in a deep winter in the Pacific Northwest and everything is wet and muddy and nasty. That's the struggle. The struggle is when your pastures don't look green and beautiful and you're just trying to figure out how you manage the mud or the dust. So I don't want to paint this perfect picture of this is what my pastures look like year round because it's not true. To be honest, this time of year is just as hard to manage as the other times. This time of year, I have to keep my animals moving. I'm trying to store stockpile up now for the middle of the summer so I don't have to try to feed my cows in the middle of the summer. They don't like the gravel. Oh, they need boots like Stormy. In the fall, I'm trying to store stockpile for the winter. So that way, as we get deeper and deeper in the winter, I'm not just throwing hay at my cows trying to keep them fed. They have something to graze on. Each year, I build a better and better system. Keep on moving, Kevin. You like... Two chubbies in a row. Yeah, hey, no. Uh, you, I'll get these guys, you keep it down the road, okay? What do I mean by the systems that I'm building? Well, for example, 
I've come up with a language of how to tell my boys how to move the cows. We go by the fence posts that are already in the field. So two fence posts is about 24 feet of pasture. They know what that means. So I, I tell the boys, hey, move them two fence posts a day, move them one fence post. That's part of our system. When it comes to the pigs, we're working out a system for moving our pigs. We realized maybe it'll be better to put high tensile wire around the whole entire field and keep that energized and then attach to it as we need it. That's another part of our system. Watering the cows or the pigs, that's part of our system. So each one of these little things that we start to develop and we start to make our own, that helps us build a better system for having pasture raised animals. Well, as soon as Clint was done letting the neighbor know they can come down, he started wrapping up the post. And so I'm gonna start uh, reeling in the wire as soon as he's done getting these posts done done. In the meantime, I'm gonna help him. This is a lot easier when there's teamwork. When you don't have teamwork, well, yeah, it can be painful. This is one day of light pressure. Um, and we are not moving them today. We're not gonna move them today because there's still plenty of feed in here. Usually the first time we move them into a pasture, we make it a little bit bigger than they need. The main reason why we make it a little bit bigger than they need is because it's the first day on the pasture. And so if we don't make it larger, then they're really confined. Going forward, what we'll do is every day they will get moved. And so it's either one fence post or two fence post. But these guys are really, really fat and happy today. And, um, you can see, I mean, they're, they got up and started moving, but they were all laying down, just enjoying themselves, just browsing along. We're gonna see them really tank up really quick. I, I would be very surprised if we don't start seeing some really big weight gains, especially on the bulls in the next month or two, uh, just because of this is what they have to eat. That is literally what they have to eat. There's four and a half acres here of grass that has not been touched for uh, close to six months. This is one of the best decisions I've made when it came to having a homestead and having a farm was to find a neighbor who had a field that they wanted something done with it um, and they, there was nothing happening. And so Dave leases this to me and it is an absolutely great opportunity for me and for him. What does it mean to be pasture raised? Well, it means you're raised on pasture, but there's more gray area there than I think a lot of people want to admit. And what I mean by that is, well, does it mean that they're strip grazed year round? Does it mean that they have a barn to go into during bad weather? I don't know exactly where that line is between pasture raised and not pasture raised, but you know what? If you're raising animals and they're eating off the land, well, I think that's pasture raised. If you have a different opinion, please put it down in the comments. I'd love to talk about it because I'm still learning. All right, we are done for today. We got the cattle moved. It was uneventful. Collect got a help, which was amazing. Thank you guys so much for joining us on A Simple Life. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.